Alert, alert, this is Charlotte Shotgun. It's Joel Tatum, and it's that little gay talk show. All the way from Houston, Texas. Let's get into it, girl. Hey, it's good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, or good whatever, because. By the time y'all get this, it'll be whatever time I decide whatever to put it up. Whatever time you're listening. Yes, exactly. On Thursdays, because we always put out a show on Thursdays. But as I've been told in the past, what time do y'all put out a show? Because I know y'all put it out on Thursday, but it's never at the same time. I'm like, it's whatever. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. Thursday's it's in gay. Day. I mean, we're this is a gay talk show. We have Please. I can't even go to a gay event out at the bars and it start on time. Yeah. <laughs> Except for happy hour. Exactly. Happy hour, starts on time. happy hour starts on time anywhere in Houston. I mean, Houston is about three o'clock. Soon as happy people right. running that door at three o'clock. Girl, mm-hmm. you're trying to get in. They're trying to get yeah. in the gate. Exactly. <laughs> like, but we're not open for another hour. Yeah, exactly. It's like y'all need to calm down. It's just it's so it's barely three o'clock. <laughs> I, I barely put ice in the bed. Wait a minute. <laughs> so there's been a few times where I've gotten to work and there's people already like trying to get in and mm-hmm. not opening up and you know the barn door that we have yeah mm-hmm. like, why is that shut i'm like because we're not open like mm-hmm. obviously like, a shut out. door means not open like come on mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they said, i'm thirsty now can you mm-hmm. please like here's some water get out mm-hmm. yeah here you well go. what you know what what time does uh well, no, we were out there at four, so that makes sense. I was going to say, what time were, uh, does George's open? Because we went to Barnaby's to yeah. have lunch, and I'm like, oh, well, George's is already open. But I'm thinking it's like two in the afternoon. No. But it's, it was seven. actually four. I think George's open at like at seven, seven in the morning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They yeah, have then. a grandfathered in uh, liquor license from way mm-hmm. back in the day, so they're able to open mm-hmm. at seven a.m. Um, mm-hmm. instead of paying that extra what ten thousand dollars or something crazy like that in order to mm-hmm. have that. So that's where the girls go when they like a month or just something crazy. I don't know. Girl, it's like, yeah. I can imagine. Mm-hmm. And um, but yeah, that's where the girls go when they like they've been partying all night at after hours till mm-hmm. six a.m. Then they do that last hour for like some cocaine and some girl uh, the eggs. Well, they go down to Georgia, keep going. I know that when before the eat uh, before it became the Eagles, six eleven was the same way. You can go get have a cocktail seven thirty in the morning. Yeah, and I'm like, Mm-mm. <laughs> no. Uh, you know what? I tried to have a cocktail. I had a friend who used to work over. Night, and he said, "Hey, I'm going to go to Six Eleven to have a cocktail." I'm like, "Bitch, it is eight o'clock in the morning. Uh-huh. <laughs> I am not going nowhere to have I a cocktail." Know, I know where I went one time, and mm-hmm. it was like ten in the morning, and I was like, "Oh my god, they're serving alcohol mm-hmm. in the restaurant." Mm-hmm. I was like, "Fuck yeah, I got like a Bloody Mary." Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? Percolating, just ready to go. The <laughs> weird thing is, is in a restaurant <laughs> at at ten, eleven in the morning. I'm okay with it. Yeah. But at 8 o'clock oh, in the morning, no, nope. I mean, we've done it. We've done it. I'm an alcoholic. Why not? Right? Why not? Mm-mm. No. The why the, back in the day, the bars were open at 7, 7, <laughs> <laughs> Now, I know that those girls who worked overnight, you... That's like late night for you, so you you want to have a cocktail before I think you. We should introduce them before we continue. Mm. Today's guest is a good dear friend of we mine. We haven't even introduced ourselves. We went we went right. We are we three did. minutes into the show, and you know what? That's actually okay because. We just really. This is how this show is going to go. We just started talking. Happy yeah. New Year! Happy Happy New Year! Happy, happy New Year. Y'all, I'm sorry 20, we did 20, not do point one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This is the part one series yeah. one. Yes, <laughs> we did Avatar part yeah. one. Yes. We did not do like a New Year's Eve kind of thing because well he had to work. I worked I, so much the past. Yeah, year. exactly. Mm-hmm. So y'all yeah, missed him on a couple of episodes and. Uh, I just got stupidly drunk that uh, night <laughs> because I knew that I was going to be cleansing the month of January because I'm doing my January cleanse. Is that a Dry Houston January. thing? <clears throat> that is a Houston. I've mm-hmm. never heard that anywhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, super like, I would do it, but I also don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never heard about it until I moved here as well. Yeah, but I mean, everybody does it here. Yeah. yeah. Like, I guess, like, you know what? I didn't know that that was a Houston thing. I just did I, it. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. yeah I just did I it because I... Mm-hmm. Like yesterday at Ripcord, everybody was drinking Topo Chico. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I was like to Jacob, "Is anyone drinking?" He's like, "No, except for you." Mm-hmm. <laughs> the one and only person in all of Houston mm-hmm. still drinking. Oh my mm-hmm. God. Well, the, uh, first of all, I want to tell you right now. Um, don't worry, most of these people won't make it a week. Exactly, oh. they won't Too even make it. Uh, most of them won't won't make it a week. A couple will make it two weeks. Uh, those very few will make it three, and then like three or four people left will make it the entire right. month. So, 
Don't don't think that uh, the bartenders are going to be serving Turpo, Topo Chico's the right. entire month of January. Right, exactly. Because some That's of these queens month. will. <laughs> The, the moment a stressful situation comes along, they'll go, you know what? Fuck this bitch. I'm having a cocktail. I need a cocktail. I need a cocktail. So, so trust me, it is not going to last. <laughs> <laughs> me, I have done it for the last several years. So I actually do make it the entire 30 days. Now that, go, yeah. Yeah. that, that first two weeks, so. Pretty intense. I know. Mm-hmm. The first two weeks I usually, because I've been doing it three years now, and the first two weeks I'm always wore out. Mm-hmm. Like I have no energy. I know. I'm exhausted. The, the yeah. first week I'm exhausted. Exactly. And all I want to do is just lay around and do nothing. Mm-hmm. And then I'll, my energy level will pick up after that. I mean, but spikes to the roof. Mm-hmm. By the, usually by the second week to third, I get on everybody's nerves because I'm all over the place. Well, it's different. Everyone, everyone gets on my nerves by Thursday mm-hmm. because I'm like, all of y'all are drunk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not the same a, I have been out everybody. with my friends where I have, where they're like, well, you, just because you ain't drinking doesn't mean we not. And I'm like, well, I'm not stopping you. From, right. Bitch, I'm what not stopping you, you from drinking. You a grown ass man. Right. <laughs> drink whatever you want to drink. Exactly. But drink I'm going to sit here with my Topo Chico or I'm going to be just fine. And then I'll watch my friends get drunk, which is a rarity because it's like, Oh, I get to sit back and watch y'all act the fool. When y'all talk about me acting the fool, this is going to be fun. This is when the table turns. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, still having. Yeah. Well, hi. My name is Charlotte Shotgun. Yeah, hey, of course, it's Charlotte Shotgun and Joel Tatum. And we have a very special guest on the show. Um, Their name is Cairo, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Miss Periwinkle Blush. We are using they, them pronouns. <laughs> we are using they, them pronouns. So, uh, Cairo. If I get, you know, you can just reach over and slap a bitch. <laughs> You're too far to reach. Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll do my best. Mm-hmm. You got some nails on. I mean, yeah, I'm I sure. Nails on. <laughs> it's time for this set. I was going to go today. I think it's the makeup of this rain. Cairo has a saying that they say mm-hmm. when he's like, if you're in punching distance, you're too close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah for, the, the, for social distancing, I said, yes. if you're within striking distance, you're too close. You mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. If I mean, my nails can reach you, you, yeah, know, you got exactly. you need to step back. I'm telling you, and I walk nails first, so if they touch you, you wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, nails first, hashtag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. No, it's great to be here, definitely. Yep. Um I am I consider myself non binary, androgynous and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Or for the street term, Butch Queen. Um. <laughs> um, so I um I definitely I, I I feel like I'm more they them, but if people say he, she or anything like that, I, it doesn't bother mm-hmm. me. As long as it's not derogatory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as long yeah. as you're not have any sort of malicious intent. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, I yeah. hate when people like are like he and drag and I was like, he who? Right. Hi ho hi ho bitch. <laughs> Yeah, I had this guy on Facebook. He was going back and forth with um, a friend of mine, and um, over a picture he posted because he didn't have his mask on. He's on the dance floor, and it was a throwback photo from like the year before. Mm-hmm. And the guy was all like, "Where's your mask?" And so my friend was, tells him, "Yeah, it was just mm-hmm. it was a throwback." And so instead of the guy apologizing and, and pulling back, he goes on this whole spiraling tirade. Nobody apologizes at on all. Facebook, I'm telling on, you, on social it, media, they don't. And so he, when I tried to tell him to calm down, he was all like, "He's he's all like." Doing the whole he, she, mm-hmm. shim to move towards me, trying to oh, be derogatory. God, and so I was like, yeah, he, she, they, and that bitch. You can't pull me down about yeah. how I feel. You know, and so then people were on him like, how are you going to be transphobic like that or, or um, gender phobic and everything? Mm-hmm. And so, of course, he ends up pulling everything down and blocking everybody. I was like, good, go back into God. your hole. Mm-hmm. That's like Billy Ghost Gruff Troll stuff right there. I know. Is Nobody like just... Guy? He uh, <laughs> he was around our age anywhere from 30 mm-hmm. to 35 maybe, I think. Mm-hmm. No more. I don't think he was quite forty, but you know, he was old enough. It's like pulling teeth to get an apology from, know, from yeah, anybody it's online. It's a generation, though. It's such a <sighs> mm-hmm. it's cancel culture. So it's mm-hmm. like I can just cancel you instead of apologizing. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, exactly. How to kind of all rare where? Well, I I, mean, I, th- I just I find a bit of irony there because cancel culture wouldn't exist if you could just if we could have a culture where you can just say, "Hey, look, I was wrong." Yeah, and I'm sorry. Or I'm not even doing so. Yeah, yeah. But when you're like, "Oh, I'm sorry," but here's the reason why I'm not sorry. (laughs) The reason why I actually was why actually yeah, and then then it's like you're canceled because if you can't even give it a a a decent apology, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear all that stuff. I I honestly know you know you were in the wrong. Mm -hmm. Just say you were in the wrong, exactly, and you can move on. And I'll still love you. Yeah. 
but you were in the wrong. Don't just admit it or just yeah, like, exactly. Move on from here. And yeah, exactly. Like, but when you want to carry it on and on and on and on, then I, then I have to cancel. I don't, even, okay. I don't even like to do that. If I'm wrong, I'm like, oh, I just I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Moving forward. Mm-hmm. That's simple. Yeah, exactly. But some people are just like. Not there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A couple brain cells. Mm-hmm. <laughs> More than a couple. I, and I have said this Maybe before. Now cells. we are we are in an unusual situation today. It has been a very unusual situation. I expected this to be a boring episode, right? Uh, and when I say boring, I mean just another episode that we do where we have fun and hang out and this and that and blah 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 blah. What I didn't expect was to be laying on my couch. Watching people climbing over walls oh and walking into Capitol build the Capitol building with guns right. and a Confederate flag. This fool walked into it. You saw the guy that yeah. with the tribal thing. Mm-hmm. With like the- I mean, a it's Confederate all flag. All types. I'm things. like, this motherfucker just walked into the United States government with a there Confederate that. flag. There this there is that. just the girls are stupid. This is just sad. And then to watch. And then oh, to wow. get, mm-hmm. like, oh, that sucks! Wow, mm-hmm. the stupidity in it. And this, I mean, too bad he's hot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I like that hairy chest going on. I'm like, is, is that a hairy chest or is that yeah. just a fur coat? It's a hairy chest. Okay, that's fur. Bro. Okay, that's a lot of. Mm-mm. <laughs> that's me, fur. Now we should not. <laughs> to be stupid, huh? Mm-mm. Now we should not be. Uh, Hyping up the fact that he's kind of hot because he is kind of. <laughs> well, we shouldn't be hyping that up. Then. I mean, because I know that stupid men in bed can be a fun experience every now and then. Right. But you don't want. I mean, every uh, now. Well, once he's crazy enough to storm the Capitol, he don't girl. need to be in my bed. Yeah, exactly. I mean, but you know, they always say that the crazy ones are always the the best ones. Well, in bed, but but you got to try to get them to leave. But <laughs> exactly. But you got to get them to leave at, at some point because it's like, oh, like, baby, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, the dick was good, but you got to go. <laughs> now, I only go to. I only get dick down at his house or at a motel. He'll never know where I live. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Crime over my wall. Exactly. <laughs> I, but I think in his case, I think he just. I mean, if you want to get that kind of crazy out of your house, just. Say Black Lives Matter, ah. or yeah, yeah. say trans rights. At that point. Just burn your just, house down just go. Room. Hey, you know what? I'm for trans rights. Watch him run right out that door. Oh, <laughs> uh, child, if you're lucky, he might just be, try to explain to you what trans is, even though he don't even know what trans. Yeah, exactly. Please tell me how I feel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, exactly. Please educate me. The Bible although, says they never once said trans on the Bible. Mm, try again. Mm, although so I kind of have a sympathetic ear because if you're trying to explain to me what trans is. I feel like that that's something that you are trying to work through. And then we need to talk about well, that because I feel like, like you are like, trying to work through some do you know kn- they're like just looking at body parts and like mm-hmm. shut up. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, like you gonna pay for my gender reassignment surgery? <laughs> <laughs> like I'll get a pussy and titties if you pay for it. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. That stomach a big ass ass mm-hmm. 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 like everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you know, they I isn't I think it's the irony when i when I have talked to uh uh transgender women mostly. Um the idea of gender reassignment when they're dating some dating someone, um, it's kind of ironic that most of the guys that they're with don't want them to get rid of. Yeah. Right, some of them don't care. Yeah, they want they want them to keep that. Whereas the person's like, like, no, like, I'm, I'm, I'm no. Yeah. I'm, it's like well, their, yeah, yeah. It's a private, their mm-hmm. private area. That's well, it's also a fetish. Yeah, it's, 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 it's yeah. a normal woman. Well, yeah, I say a uh, grown woman. Mm-hmm. And she was grown a woman and. Um, so when you have they have that extra piece, it's like mm-hmm. oh I have this taboo situation mm-hmm. that's their fetish. Mm-hmm. But the trans woman is like, look, I actually would love to get rid of this. In mm-hmm. most cases, some, yeah, of them, exactly. some of them don't want to get rid of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But some of them are like, hey, I, this is what I wanted. Like in the episode of Pose where. Um, mm-hmm. Miss uh, uh, Electra Abundance, she yeah. uh, went ahead and did what she did, and she yeah. got thrown out as a result. Mm-hmm. You know? She had to walk that line on her own, though. She realized that if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have to, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to let him go. And that must have been the hardest decision, considering that he paid for everything and took care of her for years. 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 But that's why she thought she was safe. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand something, that she was a woman of a certain age where she's like, I'm not 20, I'm not 20 something anymore. Right. Uh, uh, We don't make it to this age. So... I have I've had someone take care of me for quite some time, but we don't transgender women don't make it to that age very often. Mm-hmm, right. The death rates, especially among African American women and Latino women, is high. Absolutely. And by the way, 
I say Latina women because we don't really hear a lot of stories when it comes to Latino women. Yeah. But I can tell you, people in the Latino community will tell you it is as high as it's it's high or just as high as African American women. But there is a lot of like trans women that are Hispanic. Mm -hmm. There is. Mm -hmm. Uh, Can I tell you a story? So the first time I ever came in contact with anyone trans or a drag queen Mm -hmm. was my sister's um, best friend. She's like, "Hey, my brother's having a party. He's turning 30. Um, it's going to be at this location." And then my mom, all my new mom, my, all that my mom knew from him mm-hmm. was that he was gay. Mm-hmm. So this is me, like little, like ten year old, twelve year old sister. We were we got invited to this party, and then I remember we were the first ones there. We helped set up. Mm-hmm. They did everything like a quinceanera. Mm-hmm. So like there was like ribbons, like parties, balloons, mm-hmm. everything said like sweet fifty and shit like that. So then everybody starts arriving, and then I start seeing like drag queens and mm-hmm. big, big like like mm-hmm. goddess women mm-hmm. wearing like stripper shit. And I remember <laughs> me and my sister like, oh my god, look at them! Like mm-hmm. I like her outfit because they were all wearing like leopard print, and they were mm-hmm. all wearing like little skimpy skirts <laughs> and like thigh high boots and like big hair. Mm-hmm. And me and my sister like, oh my god, these are so pretty! Like why are they so big? Um, they start performing mm-hmm. and they start throwing cake at each other. Yeah. And mm-hmm. like, you know how the girls kiki right. mm-hmm. like that. And I remember my mom was just like, what did I bring my kids to? But then my mom had fun. We had fun. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. Mm-hmm. Cause it was just like seeing these like giant women mm-hmm. walking around in heels. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, like, said, I'm going to be that one day. Literally. I was like, <laughs> first thing being introduced to a drag queen. Just, I saw mm-hmm. these like phenomenal giant women. Mm-hmm. Like fucking, I always considered drag queens or just anyone of big stature, just like goddesses, because like mm-hmm. they That's look nice, was, yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. like we're giant women, like we're yeah. huge women. Mm-hmm. Like me, I'm a fucking, I'm a fucking rose quartz. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, very rose quartz, <laughs> very rose quartz. Oh, Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's just like it's really cool. Like, this is my first time being introduced to like anything gay like that, and I mm-hmm. always that's like a my first memory of like actually like being gay and mm-hmm. like dabbling and. Uh, just like wondering what my uh, gender identity is mm-hmm. and like what I wanted to do. And ever since then, I always think about that moment. It's just mm-hmm. like beautiful. Big, giant woman, <laughs> big hair, mm-hmm. nails. <laughs> mm-hmm. My mom was a little uncomfortable. And I remember she's like, oh, we're going to leave early. But <laughs> mm-hmm. well, but you saw what you needed to see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was yeah. amazing. My sister still remembers. She's like, oh, I remember. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. My sister's like, I think they're men. I was like, mm-hmm. who cares? Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, look at their outfits, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> of the uh, AA gay P situation going on here uh, the first time now I'm not going to say drag queen I'm going to say this boy George from Culture Club okay. first time that I'd seen someone non-binary and I'm going to use the term non-binary because he wasn't a woman he wasn't a man he was androgynous and I knew that from the beginning because I uh, uh, I'd read enough magazine to know. I'm like, he's from England and blah, 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 blah. Right, right, right. And I, the, this is probably the funniest story ever. I, I was told this story at work. I was actually a huge fan of Prince. When I, I think oh, it was yeah. 11, 12 years old. Huge fan of Prince. But my parents wouldn't let me listen to Prince because he oh, was wow. too provocative at right. the time. So I saved my little coins and I bought Controversy. And I bought the cassette because I didn't want to buy the the album because with the cassette, I could hide it. If you don't know what a cassette is, Google it because I don't have time to explain it. <laughs> it's it's an old timey exactly. thing yeah. that I'm so glad it's gone. It's ridiculous. <laughs> there, Look, I love technology. I am one of those. I'm not these old fogies who are like, I don't know how to use that. I love technology. I love the fact that. You know, I'm carrying around a cell phone and I can stream my music and movies and I don't have 90. Let me tell you something. 25 years old, having 900 CDs laying around the house, I half know. of them scratched uh-huh. because I played them so much uh-huh. and then had to replace them. Then I got <clears throat> video game cartridges laying around and all this. I was, enough, you got spit all yes, over exactly. So I was a mess. <laughs> so I remember uh, watching Prince on um, a TV show very, very late at night. I was supposed to be in bed. Uh, it was called the Midnight Special, amazingly enough. And he was, he, it was he, I think he was about 19, 20 years old. And he is, 
He's got high heel boots on. Yeah. His hair is perfectly permed. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a woman with a perm <laughs> as good as he has. I mean, just perfectly permed. Oh, yes. And he has assless chaps. I'm, I'm gonna. Uh-huh. I'm, I saw his ass. <laughs> <laughs> he was dancing around it, and the host didn't know how to describe him. <laughs> The audience loved him, but they were like, who? I, right. What is it? <laughs> what about what and I'm like, oh, my God, he's so amazing and blah, 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 blah. And my dad says, after he catches me, he goes, I don't want you watching that faggot ever again. Oh, oh girl. And I went, hmm, hmm, okay. And, of course, I'm a kid, and I already have controversies. So I don't really give a shit. Right. Uh, so we're watching Good Morning America one morning on my way to getting ready for school. And my dad says, you know, that boy, George, she sure is gorgeous. <laughs> She's just such a beautiful woman and blah, 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 blah. And I just burst out laughing and he looked at me and I'm like, and he's like, why are you laughing? I said, um, okay. Uh, I have tickets to purple rain. So I'm going to go see purple rain. Um, you just made a reference to Boy George about being a beautiful woman. Her name is Boy George. Figure it out. The name, right? <laughs> Figure it out. And I went to the movies, and later on, he never said a word. Never again. Never again said a word about any artist because we grew up watching uh, Duran Duran and all these artists who were wearing ma- lots of makeup, right. Right. big hair, high heel boots, doing us all all this stuff, and here I am. Being just as androgynous as everybody else, yeah. I had my my hat and uh, my my genderless clothes out, which was easy back then because all you had to do was take a pair of hospital pants, a real long shirt, and there you go. You, no one could tell the difference. <laughs> a little bit of me- I I didn't. I never told my parents this, but I did wear a little bit of makeup when I went to school, but wow. they never saw me wearing it. They never saw me putting it on at home. But I wore just enough makeup to get by without being right. considered a fag at the time. Yeah. Just, oh, you're one of those punk rockers, blah, 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 blah. So I was able to get away with it because I could punk rock it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I was able to do it. And then by the time I was ready to leave school, I just wash it all off and do this and that and then head on home and nobody was the wiser. So it was, yeah. So it, fantasy. That's what yeah, it was. It, yeah, it was a it was a different fantasy. So that that was my first foray into knowing one. I like this, and two, um, uh, kind of in the drag with Boy George, but not really. Mm-hmm. So that was my first foray into the gay world, so to speak, and knowing that I'm a little weird. He's a little weird. I called it. We called it weird. I was a little weird. He was a little weird. We're good. Right. Mm-hmm. So right. I modeled my entire high school image uh, after after George. Prince and Boy George. Nice. So, yeah. So that was. Those two good role models are really relevant still to this day. Mm-hmm. So they yeah. made a point. They made a, mm-hmm. they really made a point. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they really did. And like I said, the funny thing is, is that the one person who you thought was gay was actually straight. And the one person uh-huh. you thought was straight and female was actually a man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. That was a whole time mm-hmm. of androgyny for them to stand mm-hmm. out the way they did. It's yeah. just amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm, like I said, unfortunately, that was right around the time where I'm starting to discover my sexuality, started to discover uh, a whole new world out there and can't wait to get out of high school and do part. stuff. And then, <laughs> and then, bam, AIDS. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I can't sleep with no one. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm here we go. able to explore this side of me I can't. <laughs> So, yeah, so that's uh, kind of my first foray into it. So, and then since that time, as soon as I, as soon as I got out of the house, as soon as I've, I went to school, went to U of H for a little bit, but yeah. wasn't really a college guy. And uh, as soon as I hit my first gay bar, I'm like, yes, queen. <laughs> <laughs> fell right into it. I fell right into it. I had rainbow bands, rainbow hats. I was... <laughs> 
Bitch, I was into it. Uh, sounds like me. Uh, I was super out and super proud and ready to do this. <laughs> I was so interested when I finally started going into gay clubs. I started uh, mm-hmm. almost immediately go go dancing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that just threw me all mm-hmm. the way into the, mm-hmm. the bullshit. Meeting everybody, All right, mm-hmm. everybody, right? Threw me straight into the bullshit and um, it's met so many people and, and so many walks of life and. Mm-hmm. and Feeling myself to feel liberated. I just mm-hmm. felt like so free. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm walking around in my underwear and being like the hell about people yeah, and just right. like mm-hmm. enjoying my life, mm-hmm. you know, for the Enjoy first time. Mm-hmm. Seriously. Just feeling yourself yeah. and just, you know, just. For the first time in mm-hmm. my life, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I can actually just rock my gayness, mm-hmm. you know? Because I was, I, I like boys since I was on, in the playground. Like in mm-hmm. preschool, I was taking yeah. boys behind the slide to kiss them and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh. And I know for real. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> That's why I, you know what? I, that joy I felt when I came out of the closet and yeah. when I see it with non binary kids, when I see it with uh, trans kids, and this, that joy, yeah. I love seeing that joy of discovering who you are and saying, fuck it to the world exactly. and you just don't do your thing. Right. So I, I actually enjoy. This new coming out, so to speak. I, I, I just I just think it's, it's magical. It's wonderful. Like These kids. Younger, 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 yeah. Younger, younger kids, which is mm-hmm. awesome because mm-hmm. it just shows the progressiveness of a, mm-hmm. an adult parent. Because mm-hmm. like kids, kids that were my age are now getting kids of them, their own that are mm-hmm. like getting older. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like seeing them like treat them how mm-hmm. a parent is supposed to be treated. Because mm-hmm. they're, they're not trying to they're not trying to raise them like their parents raise them and they're not trying to raise them mm-hmm. how their parents got rid of, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're allowing them to... Well, most people so. seem to seem to forget millennials are raising kids now. Yeah. Uh, they are not... They're, they're not running around in college with doing their shit. They're now working and raising kids and all yeah. this other stuff. So they know how they want to raise their kids. Uh, that's... I'm of the generation where if I had kids, they would be millennials. Mm-hmm. So... I know that if I raised my kids, I would have raised them to be better than my parents because yeah, my parents were terrible. So, right, right, right. so, and, uh, so I wouldn't want to raise them. And I feel like my generation actually did kind of raise their kids to be better than them and better than their parents because their parents were, yeah. Oh my God. Right. Their parents were far worse than oh yeah. I mean, what my parents are now. So, yeah. so <clears throat> they're a product of mm-hmm. that. Prior mm-hmm. generation, yeah, exactly. Very, like mm-hmm. this is the way it's always been, and the only way mm-hmm. it needs to be done. And mm-hmm. now it's like there's so much progression mm-hmm. across the board. And I think right? that when I have conversations, and I have to, re- I have to remind, and I do enjoy this, by the way, I do have to remind my uh, my peers in their 40s and 50s. Um, you had green hair once. Mm. Right. You wore lipstick one right. one time. You had. I remember when wearing an earring was the big. <gasps> Oh yeah. my God! You're wearing and wearing too. Oh my God! You crossed the, the line. The you have crossed. When I wore, when I got my ears, when I got both of my ears pierced in high school, my parents lost it. They Thank lost you. it because my, my dad was like, "Okay," and then I didn't realize there were rules because it's like the left ear is okay because that says you're straight, but if you do it on the right, right ear, blah blah, it was ridiculous. Who knows who started that book? Yeah. So when I got both ears. <laughs> When I got both ears pierced, oh my god, it caused a scandal. <laughs> just a scandal. So, so like I said, just when I watch little videos where I see the kids wearing makeup and they're 14, 13, 14, yeah. 15 years old, I'm like, oh, that just makes my heart. Yeah, yeah. That makes my heart feel so good. I told my cousin we weren't going to talk about kids on this episode. <laughs> uh, this is a show that once joked about beating your kids. <laughs> More parents need to beat their kids. I mean, that was a long time ago, by the way, folks. Please do not send me. Uh, the direction. Don't. Uh, yeah, exactly. Don't cancel me. That was a long time ago. That I'm apologizing long. for it. Now. <laughs> but to see the kids, but to see the kids coming out younger and yet, you know, being gay at 10, that, that's nothing now. Yeah, I mean it's that's just that, like it's not like a thing that you yeah know, yeah like, it's, you it, it's, it's like parents are just like yeah. okay and, and then the, move on <laughs> and the peers the biggest piece with this is the mm-hmm. peers these mm-hmm. kids are going to school mm-hmm. with makeup on their face mm-hmm. and going to prom in in gowns yeah exactly and, and wigs on and their friends are just like mm-hmm. yeah and I mean they're, they're walking shopping, through the you know, mall in yeah. little little skirt that part in the in the late late eighties. No, I'm sorry. That's not correct. Late, mid-90s, 
the big thing was kilts. All the queens wore kilts. And I wanted a kilt so bad. I wanted, but they were super expensive. They were like $200 a pop. Yes, they were super expensive back then. And it was hard to find them because uh, you could only get them at the Renaissance Festival if you wanted a proper kilt. Now, if you wanted the shorty short kilts, they were even more expensive and they were at Hollywood, (laughs) which shows you how long Hollywood has been there. Oh. Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think Hollywood's been there forever. Yeah. There was a few Hollywood. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. I've only been there for years, but I mm-hmm. keep hearing the stories. Like mm-hmm. Hollywood, Hollywood goes back, back to the day. I mean, you can go in there and get your, get your magazines, get your lube, your sex toys. Your solvents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You were, by the time you left that store, you were covered from rainbow ah. head to toe. If you wanted to get hats or bands or anything. Bitches went crazy. I love going in yeah. there. I've never been to um, mm. Hollywood. No. Mm-hmm. Is it the one next to Buddies? Yeah, but it's yes. Buddies and Mary's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've never been there. Next to Hamburger Mary. Mm-hmm. Every time I go, it's always closed. Now, it was, if I recall, I think for a while it was in a different location. If I recall. And if any of you older queens remember, like let a, me know. Because like I do think like it was Jackson? in a, I think it was in a bigger building. Okay. I think it occupied more space at one point. <gasps> yes, it did. It used to be a bookstore, too. Uh, no, not no, not a bookstore, but you know, um, a bookstore because so you know gays had that back then. <laughs> it was a bookstore cafe, so you can like buy some gay uh, literature and have a coffee and hang out with the other gays, and that would that would be that's get some memorabilia. Yeah, get some memorabilia out. going out. Mm-hmm. Cool. So, cool. Mm-hmm. now, because we don't have ooh, that's a, a whole episode on. Bookstores in Houston. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I was going to um, I, pop up in and see someone from the bar. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. Like, go, go, mm-hmm. just go to the one in Galveston. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take that quick trip. What is that? What is that rule of thumb? Don't go to a bathhouse in the city that you live in. Mm-hmm. Something like that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That. Well, the favorite bathhouse is gone. So. Club you said? Midtown. No, Midtown. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, it was here for like a, another month or three when I first moved here. And mm-hmm. It was gone. It was gone. And everyone used to always talk about that place. Midtown. Oh, my nice. God. I loved their indoor pool. That was my thing. I Because I like swimming naked. What it's amazing. What do they have in there now? Nothing? No. It's, uh, what did they turn that into? Gym? No. Oh, no. They, just, they built another... Office, condo space in that area. So, yeah, it's just. More, um, what I understood, I never got to go, but I understood it was like the more ethnic guy, gays. Yes, it was. Yes, more ethnic gays. All the white gays with the, the to the other one, Club but Houston. They still do. Mm hmm. And they, yeah, mm hmm. They pretty much still do. And these were the white gays who were like, you know, ripped and doing special K and all that other stuff. It's and all they wanted the boys to look just like Yeah, them. exactly. And yes, exactly. So, so folks would go to mm-hmm. Midtown because they could be like, Oh, I can get down and dirty with all mm-hmm. the other boys. Mm-hmm. You know. I can be myself at Midtown. I can't be myself at at no, not at Club Houston. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Club Houston, I got to walk around with my stomach held in and <laughs> this and that. Well, I was much skinnier back then. So being, you know, being skinny in the gay community is a thing. That was, it's been a T for quite some time. Yeah, really <laughs> I mean, and it's still, like, it, sure, like, like guys with dad bods. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Cause I, it, back again, I was yeah. a twink of 135 pounds Ooh. for a long time. Yeah, and, I was 130 mm, mm-hmm. middle school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, I don't, and I don't mean no harm when I say this. Don't have a lot of color in my skin, like like some of some of my brothers and sisters. So I could walk around. I could be okay at Club Houston, but still the attitude was still the same. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I caught that. Like when mm-hmm. I first was here, my friend was like, "You need to go down there." And it was like Christmas. He's like, "He's like, you're not with your family. You need to go with us to Club Houston." I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. And very much that tone was there, and I was mm-hmm. like, you know what? But mm-hmm. after a while, I just started yeah. walking around, dancing mm-hmm. and stuff, doing my own thing. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, you know what? Mm-hmm. This guy's kind of cool. You know? Yeah, exactly. But you know what? And like I said, at Club Houston, it was all, of, you know, walk up to you and automatically, you automatically, because you're black, you automatically have 12 to 13 inches. So, you know, you're going to be doing all this. I'm like, uh-huh. 
Oh Lord, I'm going to Midtown where at least I can blend in and nobody yeah, nobody yeah. gives a shit. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't know how many times guys will walk to me and be like, "Oh, you're black, so you're a top, right?" I'm like, "Excuse mm-hmm. me." Yeah, exactly. Like, what? there's that start? no black people are bottoms at all. At I've all. never met. Mm-mm. Supposedly, yeah. I've never met a black bottom. I'm like, <laughs> uh, I know a lot of black couples. Somebody is a bottom in there. <laughs> I mean, me myself, I'm. Completely mm-hmm. down the middle verse. I'm like, mm-hmm. how versus can be. Everyone's mm-hmm. like, oh, that's not a thing. I said, no, it's not a thing. Houston, I hate, so. you know what? <laughs> Everyone that, says they're versus. That has pissed me off for 20 crazy. years. I have, I have enjoyed being a top and a bottom. Very, I'm like, well, Very well. much so. And if I'm with some, I like being with men. Yeah. Okay. When I'm with a man, I love the fact that I can. Whatever the way the wind blows, yeah. let's do this. Yeah, right. That way, that means yeah. I can have fun regardless. Yeah, like, exactly. I'm going to have know, a good time. Regardless, <laughs> like some of my friends, they'll get mm-hmm. these muscle boys home, mm-hmm. and my you know, my friends at bottom, whatever. Some of them, and they'll get mm-hmm. these muscle boys home, and they all, again they figure, oh, muscle means top. Yeah, exactly. And they get home and both they they both touching the ceiling with their ass. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, so. To me, muscle means bottom because I already know how this works. Uh-huh. <laughs> I've known how this works for Very. quite some time. I'm like that That's part. So that mm-hmm. part. Come mm-hmm. on. And I, you know, I started my young life off as a bottom, and let me tell you something. I thought I would never be nothing more than a bottom <laughs> because. Let me tell you something, and I will say this. I I said it twenty years ago, and I say it now. Being the bottom is the best thing on the planet. <laughs> it might take a lot of preparation and work, but it is the, the best thing. On good. the payoff is amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. But I met a gentleman who said, "You know, you kind of have the goods." Why don't you try being a top? And I said, okay, I'll try being a top. And I actually liked it. And I'm like, oh, I like being a top. This is, this I enjoy is nice. Both. I enjoy top. Mm-hmm. I love even, mm-hmm. you know. But the problem was is that the minute that I stepped into the top land, suddenly everybody wanted me to be a top. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody, yeah, everybody. Would, everybody. And it would, I would go top, 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 bottom. Top, 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 <laughs> bottom. Top, 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 bottom. I'm like, come on now. <laughs> Where are the verse boys Where at? are the verse boys so I can, at? I could top, then bottom. All in mm-hmm. the same situation. Top, bottom, bottom, yeah, top, yeah, top, mm-hmm. top, bottom. Fast. Like, just back and forth. Yeah, I know. Exactly. And until the day I met the farmer, and he was... Mm. The farmer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The country boy. He was... Mm. We are we, <laughs> Exactly. Came over to my and wore overalls. I'm like, this yeah. bitch is wearing overalls. <laughs> He's trying to give me the full fantasy. Yeah. I'm like, I know, he gave me the full fantasy and everything. Yes. And a full 10 inches as well, too. Ooh. I'm like, I didn't even think I could handle okay. 10 inches, and it was the best 10 inches I ever had. And we flipped. Ooh. We flipped. Yes. And if I hadn't acted like a stupid fool, we could have been together right there. <laughs> <laughs> was you dickmatized? Oh, huh? I was dickmatized. Oh, but but he it. also he <laughs> has some bottom skills that surprised me. I'm like, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> well, he's a farmer. He I'm, a, I'm in love right now. Uh, <laughs> oh, I think. Oh, that's what it was. I didn't. I'm not moving to nobody's country. I'm sorry. Oh yes, I can't. I I mean, it might be good for like six or seven bus, but after that, I'm like, so what is there to do? Yeah, you're looking at each other way too much. Mm-mm. Your neighbors are asking questions because mm-hmm. they're 108 miles away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because there's. Uh, White people know how to get in your business no matter where you're at. Okay. <laughs> Say that twice, I mean, goodness. You could uh, be a hundred, like he said, a hundred and eight miles away from, from your neighbor. And so you go into town, suddenly everybody knows your business. Everybody knows. Like, that's my gay couple. And it's like, <laughs> I don't even think I met you. <laughs> I haven't even been into town yet. Okay. Mm-hmm. You go to the hi, my name. I know your name. You're Cairo. You look at mm-hmm. there with this one and that mm-hmm. one. Uh, how'd you know all that? Oh, you know. Mm-hmm. Word gets, gets around. Word, word gets around. Mm-hmm. 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 When you see me around, I'm in a town. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we saw you when you drove in last month. <laughs> and you never left. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so that no, that's why I gave up on the farm because I'm like I can't live in the country. I can't do I it. I can live in the mountains, like in the Rockies. Yeah. I can mm-hmm. do that. But like the I country, do I don't know. If I, can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did that for a minute. I just lived up in mountains and yeah. mm-hmm. I spent four months in Alaska, which was gorgeous. I, everybody should go to Alaska at I least once. Yeah. At least go during the summer, though. Don't right. Right. go during the summer. <laughs> Get lost in the wilderness. Go, you, you can hitchhike up down the road anywhere you want to go. Nice. You can. Anchorage is beautiful. I mean, it's just gorgeous. 
Uh, it's going to take you a month to get acclimated to the fact that your ear won't stop popping. Because <laughs> Houston is below sea level. and That's how it was in, in Albuquerque. Mm-hmm. It's some areas were like um, mm-hmm. regular level. Then there was like, I think, a 2000 um, level difference mm-hmm. in all of Albuquerque. Mm-hmm. So like you would go to this one side of the road and then you drive to like two mm-hmm. minutes away and you're like all the way up to here. Mm-hmm. So Albuquerque had pop. me scared. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? I felt like I was in a Wes Craven movie. Girl, it's a post-apocalyptic <laughs> post-apocalyptic I think I would be more. Yeah, it really mm-hmm. is a post-apocalyptic oh mm-hmm. That's what it is. I think Albuquerque would scare me a little bit more than Alaska because it's desert. Mm-hmm. And you got all kinds of creatures running. You got I mean, snakes and scorpions well, and all not, kinds of shit running around. I'm Albuquerque's like, Albuquerque's not really like that though. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's, it's like a city, city, but instead of mm-hmm. grass, it's it's dirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's 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 literally a city, but it looks like a mm-hmm. post apocalyptic city. Mm-hmm. It just like, looks like everything died. Yeah, yeah, yeah and right? it's like crackheads, literally crackheads, walking around, <laughs> just eating everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. All, th- all hours mm-hmm. of the day. You go to the and, nice neighborhood in the night and get something nice to eat. Then you go outside, you get people begging for money. It's like, how'd you even get here? Mm-hmm. Right. Walking in and out the restaurant, and mm-hmm. folks just like, you know, let them mind his business. I'm like, okay. okay. He's just asking for money. I'm like, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. eating. Not okay. Here. It's mm-hmm. a good use to, I'm telling you. It does. Ugh. But I'm going to tell y'all right now, we're going to, uh, we're about 40 minutes into the show, so we're going to take a little okay, bit of a cool. break. Yeah. Yeah, and give her, because it's, it's a little hot. <laughs> and I'm starting to sweat over here a little bit, so, and we're all social distancing, so I know if y'all are watching this video later on, we are social distancing. I got hand sanitizer on the table. We we not wearing masks, but we fine. <laughs> we're sat. We're in a party. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're we're fine. Compliance with what the government has said. Yeah, exactly. I know that there's like five different strains of COVID running around out there, but oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. yeah, but we're fine. So we're gonna be right back, and we are back. We are back. We are back. Hey, what's going on, folks? How are you? Hi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's let's uh i'm gonna we we, we had some fun in that first half yeah. hour but, <laughs> but well we need to talk about you what's going on with you where, where's 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 your vibe going where's what's where are you from where are you where are you from oh, what's your sign stats please weight nudes all that uh-huh. <laughs> um so okay, I am thirty one years old. I'll be thirty two February twenty eighth. Uh huh. Um, I have a twin sister. Uh, I go by Cairo now, but uh-huh. um, I was born. My parents named me Joseph, and she's Mary. Mm-hmm. And um, oh, everything. Wow. Yeah. Um, the five siblings I grew up with, or four siblings I grew up with, there's five of us. Um, we all have biblical names. Mm-hmm. My parents are pastors. Um, but uh, originally from South Carolina, mm-hmm. a, uh, I lived in the, what they call the low country. I was on an island called Hilton Head Island. Mm-hmm. It's like 12 miles long, shaped like a shoe. Uh, mm-hmm. we, uh, we call ourselves a Geechee Gulla Nation. Oh, I, I've, I've uh, seen documentaries yeah. on... So like if yeah. people at home, like uh, in our age group, when you've seen Gulla Gulla Island, mm-hmm. uh, that was shot over there on that side of the world. Mm-hmm. And all the people on that cast are actually family. And they are actually cousins of mine. Mm-hmm. Oh, and wow. uh, yeah. And, mm-hmm. uh, like a uh, very uh, different way of living over there. Very slow and, mm-hmm. and, and easy going. Uh, I give you a little taste of what the accent sounds like. So I always say something like, um, I'm on this show right now. I'm just hanging out. I'd be like, I in this show right now doing what I got to do over here with these people that ask me to ask me some question real quick, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, I mean, it's mm-hmm. very, um, it's kind of like, Mm-hmm. Some people, when if, if my accent slips up, they think I'm Cajun or whatever. But it's mm-hmm. like I'm um, kind of Cajun with more no uh, notes mm-hmm. from like West West Indies and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but they call it East Coast Creole because the Creole thing is like it hit there first and then it makes mm-hmm. it over to Louisiana and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So very um, similar. Uh, but I wound up here in Houston um, because I left home to go for pipe fitting. Uh, Certification up there in Tulsa, then moved down to Dallas and wound up here mm-hmm. because I wasn't finding any work. And a friend was like, "I need a ride to Houston because I'm moving." And I said, "Well, I'm not doing anything, so I'll, I'll move too." Mm-hmm. And that's how I've been here. I've been here for years now. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I was in Tulsa, I was a go-go boy, and as a go-go yes. boy, I said, "Yeah." Mm-hmm. Um, they did a turnabout show, and mm-hmm. so that's the first time I did drag, and I did uh, Nicki Minaj, and then I did Miss yes. Tina Turner. I always mm-hmm. said, if I ever did drag, I do Miss Tina, mm-hmm. and wore it out. And so they were all like, "You mm-hmm. need to do drag more often." Mm-hmm. And I started kind of learning drag, but didn't do it too much until after I moved here to Houston and started going into it. Mm-hmm. And that's when I became a bearded queen. 
Mm -hmm. At first, I was very much, you know, female impersonation. Mm -hmm. People used to walk up to me all the time and ask me, how long have you been transitioning and everything? Because I was like very, I guess for lack of a better word, fish. Mm -hmm. Um, And... But when I started doing the the bearded thing, it just elevated my idea of drag mm-hmm. because I was like, I can literally do it however I mm-hmm. feel. Yeah. And realized that it could be my drag and it have to be anyone else's. Mm-hmm. And so after that, people just was all over Miss Perry went mm-hmm. dick, which is ah, like, I want, I want her mm-hmm. in my show and I want her to do this. I want her more and everything. And mm-hmm. so it's just been really uh, happening mm-hmm. really fast. And, and it's, 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 it's. It can be kind of overwhelming sometimes. I'm like, oh my goodness, like when did this happen? But mm-hmm. I love it because I get to people want to see my artistry and they want mm-hmm. to see what I can bring to the table. Absolutely. And so it's been fun. It's been mm-hmm. just fun. You know? uh, just a just a quick reminder: send us a picture because we have we have to do promos. Yeah, yeah, because mm-hmm. you know. People are gonna be like, "Who the hell is that?" And yeah, I'm like, I'll bring, I'll "Bitch, I'll I ain't got no picture." Then I last time, okay. So, quick story. Last time we had a guest on, and it was one of the first times that we we were having guests on, and I didn't have a picture, so I went on Instagram and I found a picture, and I pulled it up, and I used it as a promo. They got upset because they said, "Well, yeah, I didn't give." Them, I didn't get permission right. to do it. Blah, blah blah. It's one of my first forays into mm-hmm. having a guest on, and it was a guest that was a guest, not a friend of mine <laughs> <laughs> from down the road. It was a real, real life guest. So I had to learn a lesson from that. So lesson learned: as for <laughs> as for pictures, yeah, yeah definitely. Picture ask, 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 tell me what picture you want <laughs> because I will literally go hunting it down on. All your social media and pick whatever picture whatever. I feel <laughs> like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, I'll make, send you that for sure. Okay, yes. Yeah. So make sure that I, I would tell you to send it to Scott. Don't send it to Scott. You're going to have to send it to me because it takes him five days. Uh, <laughs> I'm so bad. Though. I know because he's so busy. It's busy. It? He is so busy. They're busy. They, they are very busy. I mean, like, because mm-hmm. um, they did this show. I have mm-hmm. a show at Eagle Houston mm-hmm. called Make You Blush. Because mm-hmm. uh, my drag name is Periwinkle Blush. Mm-hmm. So it's called Make You Blush. Mm-hmm. And um, so... Uh, is, is that... Is- is that happening tonight or tomorrow? Yeah, no, it Yesterday. was last night. Oh, it happened last night. I'm trying to know that it was happening. I know I went online and saw it, but I'm like, is it happening tonight? Tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was every Tuesday. Tonight I'm on a uh, laugh track with Carmina Barbara. Okay. It started at seven. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, no, so yeah, we did Make You Blush last night. And uh, Charlotte, Scott's persona, Charlotte mm-hmm. Shotgun, uh, she... Mm-hmm. Uh, I gave me her music the day of. I was mm-hmm. like, I do the music as later, as no later than the day before. And she gave me the day of. I was like, sorry, I've been hoeing around. I was like, mm-hmm. girl, mm-hmm. <laughs> just busy. But um, no, mm-hmm. I love her. And uh, we had a great oh, time. Oh, I love her too. Yes, I love her too. Phenomenal time. So I, so I have to like, so sometimes I'm like, okay, I have to remember I love this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll like, just, I'll just. I'm busy part two. I'm just a dumb bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, at least you're honest, right? I'm always in my head thinking, or I'm mm-hmm. always sewing. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. always, sewing. I'm like always sewing. I'm mm-hmm. like yes. I was sewing today, I was sewing yesterday, I was sewing the day before. Mm-hmm. I'm like, there's my sewing. That's what I brought in was my sewing machine. Okay. Mm-hmm. He <laughs> actually came to my house. He was sewing away. He's, he actually is at my house right now going, you know, um, I'm going to need to sew some things. Can I sew that draw? I'm like, bitch. <laughs> I don't have any sewing. I don't have a sewing. I brought all my stuff. I'm like, go ahead, girl. I mean, I to drop off a jock strap, but I didn't finish the harness. My power cut off today, but then oh, no. we turned it back on. But like an hour after, mm-hmm. and we're like, okay, I found the switch in my room, like mm-hmm. the breaker. Oh, it was a breaker. Yeah, I was going to say, did you not pay the bill? No, no, no. <laughs> we, it was fine, and then the, the lights went off, and then my roommate's mm-hmm. like, the circuit is outside, and then he went mm-hmm. to go turn it on. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, I'm pretty sure there's a breaker in my room. He's like, no, there's no breakers in here. Mm-hmm. And then I went in my room and then I f- was messing around and mm-hmm. turned on and then I pulled it all the way back, uh-huh. turned it on. And then I was like, okay, now it's Friday and now I have to leave. Right. So mm-hmm. now we're sewing that I right. could have done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. so, yeah. Um, speaking of which, did you, where's my keychain? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I even said I'm, I'm going to pay you, and you still to get it. <laughs> money doesn't motivate her. <laughs> I thought money, but I guess money doesn't motivate her. Oh my Mm-mm. god, that's all right. I even gave her a key to my key to my apartment, and she didn't even bring me a keychain. <laughs> I'll make you one. Mm-hmm. 
I was thinking about making you like a little flower or something. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm a, flowers? Do I look like flowers? Do you? <laughs> it just surprise you. Okay. Just, yes, I, I did. actually just surprise me. It'll, Just be, it'll be sexy. It'll be, like a it'll be sexy. <laughs> it'll, I'll, I'll need it before I go out of town on the nineteenth, though. Okay, cool. I okay, gotcha. that way, that way, when I'm asked, "Hey, where'd you get that from?" Yeah, I say, "Yes, my my friend Charlotte made it." So you got to mm. give her a deadline. If mm-hmm. you give them a deadline, then okay, yeah. mm. deadline. <laughs> oh well, he made my cousin's drawers. <laughs> <laughs> No time flat. Okay, <laughs> like two days. Took him two days. Was he hot? The, who are his cousin? Yeah. His cousin's cute. Mm-hmm. See. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just said because I was like, you, like my, I think he needed Yeah, I think if my cousin it. listens to this episode, you ain't never going to get him off of you, girl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. And you young, too, you ain't never going to get him off oh. you, girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I think he asked me for if, he could, if I could make them fast, and then I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. So I just did it. Mm-hmm. Again, deadline. You got to put a deadline. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, he had a deadline too. I think he was uh, entertaining a young gentleman. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So he he wanted to show him off. Mm-hmm. And they were. They, and by the way, he made them in two days. But my cousin didn't pick them up until two days later. Said so they were sitting on my desk. Yeah. For two days, and I'm like, Marcus, get your ass over here and get the because I cannot. Every time I look at these, I keep picturing you in them, and I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> I seriously do not want to do that oh anymore. So, mm-mm. yeah. <laughs> unless you unless you come and get them, they're gonna be, be thrown in the closet, and I'm gonna forget all about them later. Okay. And then a year later, I'm gonna be like, I "Did I have somebody uh-huh. over?" Exactly. <laughs> Where are these from? Mm-hmm. Because you, uh, because I have found underwear in my closet when I'm going through and doing laundry and stuff, and I'm like, I don't recall that I bought these. Times where I'm just like. Who's, mm. who's, who's Hanes are they? Yeah, exactly. Because I don't wear Hanes. Mm-mm. Wearing these basic. Underwear. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I don't. Straight trade over here. Mm-mm. Right? Mm-mm. Like, who's, who's are these? Why are they a medium? Because <laughs> the moment I see you in Hanes, you got to go. I, I just. Mm-mm. Oh, nothing or something cute. Take them off real quick. You got to take them off real quick because if you think you're going to be dancing in front of me in Hanes, you can forget it. <laughs> I don't mind. I mean, a lot of, like I said, a lot of guys that come over with hands and foot alone tend to be undercover brothers, you know. So I'm like, okay, well, you oh. know, mm-hmm. I, I get through it. That but, part. you know, so long as they're not like, you know, got holes in them or something. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like your rundown draws. I'm like, okay, what's I what's mean, if you got holes, uh, you most likely he's married. <laughs> well, hopefully he took them off before I saw them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, exactly. That usually happens. They're, they're yeah. Mm-hmm. Look over. I have figured out that if they're, they're, you see a hole or the band's a little out stretch, I'm like, this motherfucker's married. married. <laughs> <laughs> to a woman. She buys something where she hasn't gotten it yet. So mm-hmm. you know, they'll still fit. You're fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, the reason that I got was was because if if she catches him in the underwear that she bought, she knows he cheated. But if he's wearing the underwear that she told him to throw away, <laughs> she, yeah, exactly. As far as she's concerned, if like if she found him in the back seat, he's she's like, oh, well, I guess he was going to throw him away and forgot, right? Because they're old and falling apart, right? But if if it's brand new underwear that she found in the back seat, then she's like, "Oh, uh, uh-uh. uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, ma'am." You've been buying a keepo. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't know how many download men I are listening, but I, I might have your given away your secret. Though. Your secret safety belt. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. story. Yeah, mm-hmm. I did that. I go commando like mm-hmm. all the time. It's, it's uncomfortable. Like right now. I accidentally, <laughs> it is uncomfortable, and I accidentally zip myself once, and I will never do it again. See, everyone says that. Never did it again. That yeah, I, I zip myself once, and it took me forever to get the zipper out. <laughs> oh, you zipped it hard. I zipped it pretty hard because I went. <laughs> I would say, uh, what were you on for a rush to? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause I was in a, in a rush and I was, uh, uh, and I forgot I wasn't wearing, I was going commando and it just went right up in there and I cried, I cried like a bitch. 
Oof. I cried. I, I mean, I cried. <laughs> I and I don't cry. I, I, I think that was it, I believe. I don't mm-hmm. think it was an adult. I think, anyway. yeah, I mm-hmm. think when I was younger. Yeah, that mm-hmm. did hurt. And I, well, I still remember mm-hmm. it. But uh, mm-hmm. to this day, I mean, like, I go commando and I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I, that shit yeah. stuck in. No, it was, it, was, it was pretty in there. I had to, my best friend had to help me. Uh, oh, it was that and, bad? Yeah, it was that bad. Wow. Yeah, my best friend had to help me, and it tore a little bit of skin. But, uh, it, yeah, my best friend had to help me, which so is why he's still my best friend now. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, so it takes a best friend to see your situation and go, girl. Okay, okay we're going to we gonna, we gonna be all right. Yeah. You, 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 just oh, my God. Bite down. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I was in a hurry. And I, I mean, went up in there. So, mm-mm. how many zippers have you broke? It sounds like you zipped it up real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How, many teeth, how many teeth did you break? Oh, oh. yeah, exactly. I don't. I don't remember. Girl, all I saw was a white light. I don't know. Like <laughs> just flashing. Mm, just my life flashed before my eyes. I don't remember. <laughs> white flashing in your eyes. Mm-hmm. So, mm-mm. back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes. mm, back to you. I was. I don't mean to make it about me. No, you're fine. Mm-hmm. That was funny. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. Um, I mean, along with the drag and everything, I'm also in. I'm in creative writing, mm-hmm. and I'm uh, hoping to get into making um, adult oriented uh, sci fi and fantasy cartoons. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. That's my main gag. <gasps> What? Okay. Yeah, that's 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 like the big dream. You gonna have to you gonna have to talk to a, a we we're having Clayton back on the show here. Uh, he is doing a LGBTQ anime. Oh, cute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He has a. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, wanna, um, I definitely want to have black themes mm-hmm. and LGBTQ themes. Mm-hmm. So like, yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to talk to him. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, um, there's this one project I'm working on. I actually have it. Um, Going through some some pitch work mm-hmm. and everything, um, it's called Omegas. Mm-hmm. And so the quick the quick idea is um, one day the entire black population of Africa disappears without a trace of mm-hmm. any idea as to why they, where they went or why. Mm-hmm. And about three months after that, all black people across the planet start to showcase super abilities of some kind. Mm-hmm. And so the world kind of is. Um, weirded out about it and everything like that but everything's kind of okay until suddenly you know, there's riots and whatnot going on mm-hmm. and so they actually separate the um, black people who they're calling omegas because they feel like they're a sign of the end of times they separate mm-hmm. them from the rest and when they do this um, the world kind of goes at ease until uh, people say well how come we can't use their powers for what we want mm-hmm. and so then they start to do what they call omega renting and they rent time for the omegas to leave their mm-hmm. what they call districts in order to use their powers for whatever the people want mm-hmm. to do and um, it kind of goes from there uh, following the themes of uh, systematic slavery mm-hmm. and um, then themes of uh, black on black, uh, uh, the hierarchy that, that kind of that caste system that's there for like shade, of, mm-hmm. like, uh, shade of black and um, status of black mm-hmm. um, and how we were kind of caught up in that stuff right now. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, bullshit that we shouldn't be in and mm-hmm. um, LGBTQ. Uh, themes as well, um, and the idea of gender and gender mm-hmm. identity. Um, you know, nothing. So it's like it's, it's, it's supposed to be uh, mm-hmm. the the mapping that we've done so mm-hmm. far for it. It's like it's gonna touch on some really heavy mm-hmm. stuff and whatever. Nothing still get still riles me more than the fact that we're still caught up in the whole colorism thing. We still exactly. caught up in that. Exactly. Still yeah. caught up in that. That's that's the most ridiculous thing on the planet to still be caught up in. And with all the things that black folks need to be worrying about, this should not be one At of them. All. This shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Well, you know, the, um, I, I only heard about where that came from a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, it was like during slavery. Mm-hmm. Um, prominent slave owner, he sent mm-hmm. a letter to everybody and mm-hmm. said, like, if you separate blacks by the shade of black, you have them separated for the next 300 plus years. Mm-hmm. And that was barely 310 years ago, I think, that mm-hmm. that, that, that was sent out. Um, and yeah, we're still dealing with colorism as mm-hmm. well, and it's like, why? Mm-hmm. You know, seriously. And I'm, I'm, I'm darker skinned than mm-hmm. um, a lot of people, and mm-hmm. I've dealt with the brunt end of a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I've learned not to let that dim my shine. Mm-hmm. Finally, but it took but, a while. But at the same time, I think that there is, uh, uh, as much as it's, I'm still like, mm, this is ridiculous to still be having this conversation. Um, I am starting to see more in the lights, especially. When it when it comes to 
I, I think women, I think darker right. skinned men have a slight advantage over darker skinned women. No, women are, yeah. Unfortunately, I think, unfortunately, darker skinned women get hit the hardest right. of uh, being less beautiful than right. other women. Right. And the lighter the skin, the more beautiful a black woman is. Right. So uh, I think when it comes to darker skinned men, I think darker skinned men are okay on a certain level. I mean, I, I don't, I don't mean no harm when I say this, but it, 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 it tickles me sometimes when I see a darker skinned man with a super blonde white woman. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, whoa, she went, <laughs> she went down deep. And I don't mean no harm by that, by the way, but she went down deep. <laughs> and he went, he went way, he went way on the other side. I mean, he could have got himself a brunette or something. He got a soup, a blonde, pale ass. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, if you've been in, the, I mean, like when you're on the mm-hmm. side of people holding you down for your complexion mm-hmm. all your life, you're going to behold. Yeah, exactly. Way, way, way more mm-hmm. skin situation. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, but, but unfortunately, um, when it comes to black women, it's not the same. Right. So, right, right, right. although um, I am more encouraged to see uh, more in the media of. Uh, Black women uh, being with men of other races. I know that that sounds weird. It shouldn't sound weird, though, because we see black men with other races all the time and nobody thinks about it. But everybody always thinks about it when it's black women. But and to, and see, and to see darker skinned women be included in that conversation as well, I think is I think it's it's a step forward because I feel like that we uh, uh, darker skinned women and men are starting to embrace Hey, it is what it is. Yeah. But I'm beautiful, bitch. Very bad. I'm very beautiful. So yes. I'm gonna embrace it. I'm gonna love it. You get Kelly Rowland, Megan Thee Stallion, mm-hmm. even Lizzo. I mean, body confidence mm-hmm. and skin confidence, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's really starting to finally mm-hmm. make a make a switch around. Mm-hmm. It, it is, you know, mm-hmm. it is. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you can see the confidence, I think, in, in black women more than ever, right? Especially. Especially when it's like I said, even with with elections, where it's like, oh well, black women won this election. Bitch, black women have been doing this for quite some time. Y'all just now recognize. Mm-hmm. Y'all, the sad thing is, y'all just now re- recognize this. Y'all should be ma- mad at white women. White women are the ones who voted for Trump more than anybody else. So you should be mad at white women more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Not that the people are mad at black women. It's just the fact that they hold black women up to this certain standard of, hey, they're the ones who won this election and saved us. But white women were the ones who put us in this situation to begin with. So I, I just I, I just think it's unfair. But I don't uh I, I don't want to get too much into politics. Mm-hmm. We we it's it's just been that kind of day. Yeah, I mean it's hard not to I mean, we mm-hmm. didn't expect that to be the tone of the day, but mm-hmm. look. We did not expect that to be the tone of the I day. He was planning on doing it for a minute. <clears throat> I didn't think I was gonna get this. I mean that mm-hmm. would have been there. Definitely, the rumors have definitely. Been, he was putting, he was posting know. it on Twitter a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's like we're having a, a what is it called a rally, mm-hmm. and he just hyped it up to something completely absurd. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. here we are today. And here we are. <laughs> and here we are. And I can't wait till Twitter dumps his ass. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. And in fact, if I Twitter go on ahead and do it now, because because okay. look what he did today. Go on ahead and do it now. Maybe. Did you see the thing with this guy? He actually literally, tweet by tweet, just made exactly what Trump put up. Mm -hmm. But he didn't retweet. He just put it as if it was his own. And he got canceled by Twitter numerous times. Mm -hmm. They said, this is like racist. This is Mm -hmm. is sexist. This is this. And Mm -hmm. And so they're like, okay, so these are exactly verbatim what Trump has said. And y'all have yet to pull his. Yeah, exactly. He's the president. I think yeah, I mean, but yeah. still, though, mm-hmm. I mean, like that's I think, that's, yeah. that's a stupid reason. That's like mm-hmm. a horrible reason to keep him up there just because mm-hmm. he happens to have a place of power. So if that is the reason, whenever he's no longer president, we'll see if mm-hmm. they actually go ahead and take him down. Which yeah, I, I think, think so too. Happen. I hope so because yeah. uh, he is he is. In Democrats control. are in control. Let's see what happens. Fair <laughs> Fair Democrats are in control in both houses now. And as much as I would love my two thousand dollar check, I would love to see him in jail more. Yeah, right. they said that we are going to get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but I don't really care about that. I need to see him in jail. in jail. I need to see him standing before a judge getting ready to go to jail. That's what I need to see him because after today. We're all ready for it. Yeah, because after today, uh-uh, I'm not putting up with any more. Not, no, no more nonsense. The man needs to go. I really am.
I'm surprised they haven't deleted his Twitter though. Because mm-hmm. it's just like every post that he makes is like this is not this is artificial facts or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like the, yeah. the little mm-hmm. yeah. footnote. And it's and you can tell. I'm gonna tell you right now. It's gonna take a little bit. Of, it's gonna take a lot of time to heal from this. But like I said, oh, yeah. most of these people are already sick of him. Very. So they've moved on, and the people that showed up at the ra- I don't know how many people it was. It looked like it was a huge crowd, but I don't know how many people it were. Um, I know that I work off of Washington Avenue, and every every weekend we watch the little Trump parade of trucks ride by <laughs> with Trump flags every every weekend. I think every Saturday at five o'clock. Oh my god! For the last three weeks, yeah, we watch this every week. And the first week, I was like. Mm. I can't believe these people. These people don't even know that you lost. Let it go. Right. Move on. on. And then after a while, it's like eh, they're just doing their thing. But after the day, uh, uh-uh. right? Uh, uh-uh. I have made it. I'm going to make it quite clear on my social media and what have you. If you are still supporting Trump, don't yeah. be on my social media. Get out. Get out. I have put up with your bullshit for the last three and a half years, and I've given you the right to free freedom of speech on my page because I'm like, hey, you. If that's what you believe, that's fine. I'm not going to worry about it. I'll ignore your post and move on. Now I'm deleting you. I'm done. I'm deleting you. It's because point, for sure. Because if you're still putting up with this foolish, foolishness, if you still use Black Lives Matter protests to justify what happened today, if you're still doing all that stuff, you got to go. Very bad. You can always go to that new, uh, what's the new one, parlor. Head on over the parlor. I will help you get there. And y- y'all stay over there. You do. Mm-hmm. I mean, like rioting for a cause that has been mm-hmm. something that's holding you down and killing you for the past mm-hmm. 300 plus years versus, mm-hmm. oh, I don't like the fact that the guy I voted for is not in office. Mm-hmm. In the right. That was totally not yeah. even relevant to each exactly. other. Exactly. You literally are trying to stomp over my right as a voter to vote for the person that I want to be in office. Because you got upset because your your party lost. Exactly. Because you no, not your party. I don't even think most of these people care about Republicans. They only care about Trump. Yep. Exactly. And that's it. Mm-hmm. You know. Like how stupid can you be? Mm-hmm. I mean, a friend of mine, Mike James, he actually made a, a good point. He was like, when everyone was all up in arms about the riots happening, mm-hmm. he said, well. If y'all recall, in the history books, it says during the Revolutionary War, mm-hmm. uh, the Boston Tea Party was exactly that. Mm-hmm. That's exact, and they called it revolutionary. Mm-hmm. But when black people and people of color do it now in this day, they, they call it uh, just ridiculous crime. And, and mm-hmm. everything. they call it let's let's call it what they call it. They call it rioting. They call it rioting. They call it rioting. They call it rioting. Protests. And, uh, mm-hmm. most, most of everything was mm-hmm. peaceful protest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they call it rioting. A few people looted the store, and suddenly everybody in Black Lives Matter is looting and shooting and doing all this other stuff. And that happened once or twice, and it it became it got out of hand. It's just the way that the media but, put it out. There's but the the moment that I watch these people climb over a wall, I'm like, y'all can't use that argument anymore. Mm-hmm. You're done. done. You're you're law abiding whatever bullshit over this man. Y'all are dead. And they carried them out of it. I mean, mm-hmm. like, if there was people of color coming over there, well, mm-hmm. it would have been. I, I, I don't know how many posts I saw today that said the same thing. White and black saying, if there were black people doing that, y'all would be ready to shoot. They y'all would, y'all, they would have all been, been y'all would have had a massacre been, on the lawn. Yeah. They would have mm-hmm. really had National Guard and this is, killing people. Mm-hmm. This is white people and black people saying this. Right. If it was black people doing the same thing, it would be a massacre on the lawn. I mean, they didn't even use so much as rubber bullets. It's like, mm-hmm. like okay, come on down, baby. Time to mm-hmm. go home, children. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I told my friend, it was like, it's like, you know, like, a uh, person of color, when you get in trouble with your mom, they, like, beat the shit out of you. But then it's like your white friend that gets in trouble for the same thing. Go to your room. Mm-hmm. Like, you're grounded. I'm like, it's that sort of vibe that I got. Mm-hmm. Like, the, yeah, very that. It's like, um, okay. It's like, they don't want to learn. <laughs> mm-hmm. They ain't going to learn. You know, put that... Stamp down, but like mm-hmm. hey, the same it's thing like, that they're accountable mm-hmm. for, yeah, no, you're accountable for. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I like I said, I have put up with a lot. But I'm not after today. I'm not putting up with anymore. You want to follow Trump? You do it on your own page. You do it on your own social media outlet. You will not be on mine. Mm-hmm. Period. I don't care if I've known you for ten or fifteen years. I don't care if I knew you for a year. You will not be on my page, and I don't even think I want to talk to you, Great. honestly, Great. because. Uh, your politics represent everything I despise, and if you are still defending this man after what he did today, I don't want you. I, 
I don't want to know you. We're done. That's all there is. And I, there's a couple of gays out there who I know who are on my page who are Trump supporters. I'm telling you the same thing. I am telling you. I know we've been friends for a long time. But after today, if you still rallying behind this man, you got to go. Yeah. Kick rocks. Mm hmm. So. Mm hmm. So. Tell. Say that. I mean. Mm hmm. I mean, we're at a. We're literally at a point. He's at the end of his reign. Mm hmm. And that's literally how he wrote, rules it as a reign. Mm-hmm. And um, he's trying to kick and scream and make as much noise as he before possibly he gets can out, before right? he goes off. And mm-hmm. I'm like, baby, yeah. this I mean, mm-hmm. right. the level of the level of like un- mm-hmm. the stuff that they have to undo because of him mm-hmm. at this point, mm-hmm. y'all. It, it, it came to a fulcrum today. Mm-hmm. Like literally storming the Capitol. Like, mm-hmm. you've never heard of that. Mm-hmm. But the Who? last thing that happened was in the Civil War. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, seriously. Exactly. Who who does that? Who who incites this? And then goes slinking off to the White House and expects everybody to just go home after that. Did he really expect people to just go? A crazy person. Yeah. yeah. Who's stuck in an altered reality? He knew exactly what he was doing when he. Checked. Yeah, that's why I said he knew exactly what he was doing when he was talking to those people at that rally. He knew exactly what he was doing. He needs to go to jail. He got them hyped and then he dipped. Yep. yep. He dipped and left. My roommate said the same thing. Mm-hmm. He got them hyped. He got them angry and he dipped. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. That's what he does. He's a, he's a corporate entity. I mean, mm-hmm. that's what they do. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, literally just go in there, pull the strings, and it's sit like, back. Fuck and, the people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm out. The, I got what I want. Their labor or act like they never, were never involved. I mean, mm-hmm. hmm. I know. That's what they wanted. Mm-hmm. They wanted this type of person. This is exactly what you asked for. You got him. You had four years of him. You're done. We're, we're moving on now. Yeah, we, there's the there's other stuff going on in the world now. Yeah. We're moving on. So. Right. Y'all had y'all little temper tantrum. You did your thing, okay. but like I said, if y'all still, after, if y'all have not been convinced after this that this man is a megalomaniac who only cares about himself and does not give a shit about you, then you need to move on. Open those eyes. Oh, mm-hmm. You need to move. There's there's a places where you can go where you can hang out with like minded people if you want to, but the rest of us are going to move on in society. So. And there are three men here at this table who are in uh, uh, two. Um, uh, you know what? I'm not even going down that road. <laughs> there are three people at this table. Three I'm queer s- individuals. Three queer. In- <laughs> Thank you. I can say queer. Yeah. There you go. Three queer, okay, individuals. I, three queer individuals. Thank you. You know, I forget that. I could just, just say queer. Yeah. It's easier. <laughs> when you're trying to remember that someone is sappho sexual with a tendency towards asexuality and this and that and blah, blah, blah. You're queer. <laughs> We're all under the queer umbrella. Yeah, we're all under the queer umbrella. It's fine. So if three queers at this table who are moving on, one is from the past and two are from the future, we've moved on. Y'all need to move on the same. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So Y'all reminiscing in your past. mm -hmm. Time to move on, baby. Mm -hmm. Time to move on. Next chapter, next Mm -hmm. book. Mm -hmm. And next chapter, speaking of which, um, girl, what kind of events you got going on coming up? We 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 need to I'm sorry, we. I'm sorry, y'all. Like I said, oh no, we. Hey, I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Talk about January six has yes. been that kind of day, yeah, but seriously, oh. mm-hmm. I can find you. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, every like I said, every Tuesday at Eagle, um, definitely. Um, then uh, I'll be doing laugh track uh from time to time with Carmina. I'll be. I did it tonight. I'll be on. Why that. don't you? You know what? Give us a little bit more detail about laugh yeah, track. So Tell laugh us about laugh track. Uh, is I did a, it last week. Yeah. yeah, I was on it last week. Mm-hmm. Um, laugh track. I'm gonna try to. Put it's like an online it. show. Yeah, it's um, a digital drag show. Mm-hmm. Um, Anything goes. Just yeah. be funny. Just be different. Mm-hmm. Funny, like, be different. Make sure you are not offensive. Yeah. Um, and things like that. Which, and don't get them blocked. Right. Don't, don't do anything stupid. <laughs> um, but it's, it's on Twitch. It's, um, I should have known it was on Twitch. Yeah, on Twitch. I was gonna say yeah. it's on Twitch. Twitch. <laughs> 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 Slash Carmina with a C A R M I N A Vavra A V A V R A. And you can just watch the past episodes. Yeah, you can definitely. How you know what? I tried to watch the past episodes with um, with uh, with Darius uh, Blackberry. with Blackberry. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Blackberry. <laughs> you know I love you. <laughs> we love you, Blackberry. We love you, Blackberry. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And she's told me she's listened to the show a couple of times, so so I just want to make sure that she, this is not one of those times. <laughs> I just I just thought of her Facebook page when I was because uh, she's on my Facebook page, so I just you know she goes yeah. by Darius, right? So um, yeah, so yeah, I I 
I watched one of Blackberry shows on Twitch, and then I'm like, I wanted to see what the old ep- I could not figure out how to get to the old episodes. I know that when you look up Carmina, it's like a channel or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it should be like archive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when she was doing uh, with Honey Bee and... Um, yeah. The, the, yeah. I know what you're talking about. The, yeah. The, when she was doing the... the H-Town th- Hotties. Yeah, H-Town Hotties show. I'm like, I really want to watch this, but I can't seem to pull it up because it keeps pulling up Megan Thee Stallion for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, H-Town Hotties. That's mm-hmm. my original. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well... So between uh, Make You Blush every Tuesday, mm-hmm. uh, 10, uh, 10, 10, 30, you know, drag queens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, then i um, going to be doing the laugh track um, again with Carmina next month on the 24th. On the 24th. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's Wednesday. Um, and uh, from time to time, we'll be doing uh, Punk Goes Drag with Rosé. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, well, that's a ripcord. Mm-hmm. And, um, every other Wednesday. So um, as she books me, I'll do that. Um, and I just did uh, Basura mm-hmm. over at Poppy's. Yeah. <laughs> with Luna I, s- I saw the video. I yeah. saw the. So <laughs> it's oh my so God. hilarious. That is a great show. And um, to mm-hmm. off the beaten trail, a lot mm-hmm. of people don't, don't wind up at that show, but it's a great show. It's mm-hmm. just trash drag. Basura is trash for those who don't know. Mm-hmm. That's so it's very trash drag. <laughs> it's all, all drag. It's a great show. Luna's mm-hmm. a phenomenal hostess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I came up, uh, across that video by accident. You know how on Facebook when you watch videos and then they have a stream yeah. of videos that you can scroll yeah. through? And I was just scrolling through and there it was. And I'm like, oh, I know. I know. I I know this place. And then the video. Uh, no, the new. The uh, the one where he has the wig on oh, and the in promo. the bathroom. The promo, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hilarious. I laugh so, so hard. I'm like. That was funny. I like the one where um, mm-hmm. she's like playing a nurse. And he's like his little sisters like, mm-hmm. repeating everything yeah. he says, but she can't You know that's that's funny because I knew that we were going to be doing this show today and it's funny that that came across. While I was bored waiting because I knew he was running late because of the weather, right. and I was bored and I was just strolling through and Basuda, uh, the video for Bas- uh, yeah. promo for Basuda popped up, and he got these glasses on and this long wig and he's talking. Hey, what's up? And, then, and I'm like, you what is going that. on? And I'm like, oh, I, I just started laughing and I'm like, oh, it's so nice that this is Houston based. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And then he's standing there with his legs spread open, oh and everything God. just everything falls <laughs> out. <laughs> oh my God! Oh my God! I'm like, is that a doll? What is that? Well, <laughs> what is falling she, out of here? <laughs> when she did this, the shower scene, and she's like, open I, the door, and I she know photos. I and she know. Gets to Carmina and it, that, that god awful ball, ball, mm-hmm. ball when she mm-hmm. makes ball. trash. And it had like little <laughs> words like, <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. Is that, I was trying to think of a. I was trying to think of yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, she does it like I do the show sometimes. Yeah. I would go off on a tangent and say, oh, I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. That's like, that's, mm-hmm. that's her mind. Like, mm-hmm. she's really she just is really so like, funny. Yeah. Uh, we don't have to have that bitch on the show because yeah, she is hilarious. That, that, was, that was phenomenal. <laughs> I gotta say that was phenomenal. I'm like, I, yeah. I'm like, you know what? After my cleanse is over with, the, I'm heading over the poppies. Yes. <laughs> well, um, if you ever look her up on, I, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's just Luna of the Lilies. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure, but um, her makeup tutorials are phenomenal. Mm-hmm. She does a lot of spooky. Yeah, she does a lot of spooky and um, mm-hmm. more uh, special effects style. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I don't tutorials know on there. Like on YouTube or? Uh, she might have them on YouTube as well, but I've seen them on IG mostly. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't um, know that. That's cool. You could probably you could probably catch them on Facebook Live. I mean, not Facebook Live, but on the videos because that's where I caught your uh, your video for uh, for your for your makeup. Yes, uh, just Luna of the Lilies, all one word on. And I'm talking about Instagram. Mm-hmm. And you can check her out. Yeah, and I'm. Oh yes, I did see. Yeah, that. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, it's like the same concept as mine. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I need to do that. Yes. I saw someone else on TikTok. Mm-hmm. And I and I'm, I'm. By the way, in case you don't know, I'm talking about my co-host. He he did pop up on a one of my videos where he's doing a. a, a I'm not gonna say tutorial, but you were showing how you were putting on your makeup for. Oh, the, oh my God, the look, the look, the one that I love. <gasps> yes, with the. Oh my God, y'all need to check that out because. That look is everything. I look like a woman. That look was everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. That look is everything. And I just, I'm like, I'm, 
I'm so proud of this girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. She showed up. I'm like, okay. Like, I'm like, okay. She beat herself. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kel and, of course, Miss Fa- Face was beat to the gods. Yeah. She had... I, I I don't mean no harm, but I don't think I've ever seen her face that beat to the guys before. That I face mean, was beat to the guys. That hair, oh, it's all about that hair. That, that hair, red, honey. that that red, honey. that red, honey. Mm. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that look that you just gave, you were all. It was all about face, face, was, face, girl. Face, face. She always serves body. She got that corset on mm-hmm. for the guys, and then mm-hmm. she got them hips. Mm-hmm. Baby, but in this one, she served face, and I melted. Okay. I'm like this bitch. Good job, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to show up to make you blush and make them mm-hmm. blush, honey. She showed sure ah. that. Mm-hmm. that. Y'all need to check that out, uh, by the way. Check out that on, on Facebook because I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. I just sent it to you if you want to post it on the thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I, I might have already done that. Because <laughs> sometimes I'll see your videos and go, oh, they're going on our page. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, you, but you can still send it, though, but I'm still going to put it on the page because it's like... <laughs> Like I, I was like, just beat for the guy. Girl, I'm so proud of you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Keep it up. This was a girl who moved to Houston on a whim after a bad breakup, and look at this bitch now. Okay. Came over to my house. <laughs> came over to my house and said, "Okay, I'll do one episode." She's been on the show since. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And now she's back out in Houston. Dude. She's got her own show going on. Okay, she's got she's hooking up with a community that is supportive and everything else. Just yes. Where's my applause button? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, bitch. Yes. <laughs> so we're almost at the end of the end of the episode. Ooh, Lord, I'm taking this corset off. <laughs> you want to give us your social media. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. You? All your social media, please. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all can post on there, but uh, Facebook it is um, you have Cairo spelled like Egypt, C A I R O dot N like Nancy, F like Frank, T like Tom, A L I. Or uh, if you want my drag page, it's Periwinkle Blush. And then on Instagram, it is N B underscore Showtime. Dot cosplay because I does the cosplay, honey. I love me a good comic yes. book situation. What kind of comic book situations are we talking about? Girl? Well, um, you, and I'll send you the link to the video. That, um, mm. two two Tuesdays ago, I actually did a whole storm illusion, like had the full mm-hmm. original white outfit and the cape and mm-hmm. everything. Uh, had that custom made, and that mm-hmm. was gonna rain on me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Am, am I gonna see some anime cost? Uh, cosplay coming from you anytime in this? Uh, I, I'm hoping to. Uh, now that uh, things are kind of starting to. Level out a little bit It seems Fingers crossed mm-hmm. um, I'm going to start Trying to do more Because um, a lot of my cosplay Has been just Original concepts mm-hmm. mm-hmm. um, But maybe with like A little bit of influence Here and there Like barbarian influence mm-hmm. Or anything in between mm-hmm. But I would like to start Doing some actual Like anime cosplay mm-hmm. and Video game cosplay again. Mm-hmm. So yeah Definitely so look, Keep mm-hmm. on the lookout keep Because on the lookout. Uh, Comic Palooza Is coming up yes. Oh when is that Mm-hmm Girl, what? what? <laughs> I didn't know if anything I'm was so, happening. This I'm year. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, they've already sent me a newsletter. They okay. send me a newsletter every year. And every year I try to go. Right. Last year I couldn't. I was so upset because of this goddamn Corona right. that I could not go to Comic Palooza. And this year I had planned on like taking the show there, okay. and we were going to do like a little episode. And this was before I met you. And. <laughs> We were going to do an episode, but Corona, uh, corona closed, took care of all that. So I'm thinking about trying to do that again. So When's the dates for that? Uh, it, it's usually around Mother's Day. Okay. Oh, I hope it's not Mother's Day this year. Because I can never get out of work if it's Mother's Day. <laughs> I can never get out of work with... The busiest days. Yeah, so they, sw- they switched it. They switch it back and forth each year. Okay. So I need to check to make sure if it's Mother's Day weekend, I might have to quit my job. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then say, can I come back on Tuesday? Okay. <laughs> so Charlotte and me, we be, yeah, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Go yeah, down yes, because, yeah. yes, I was going to, uh, yeah, that's something that I wanted to. They don't need conventions. But I'm, yeah, but I want to find out what's going on and what all the details are first before, because I know that they offer a boost for podcasters. Okay. Uh, so, and um, I think it's free. Oh, if nice. I remember correctly, if not, then I'll pay the fee. Fuck it, we're gonna do it this year. Let's do it. So, do it. 
I'm like, if I can get some queens to do yeah. no cosplay moment, do okay. do some cosplay, I'll bring my promote the show. <laughs> blah 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 blah. Let's do this. <laughs> I've got Storm. I've got Sindel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got uh, mm-hmm. Barbarian Woman. I've got Barbarian Man. I've got I mean mm-hmm. an- Angelic this uh, mm-hmm. or African deities and stuff like mm-hmm. that. The list goes on. We got some. Mm-hmm. More. And you know, being non-binary, you can do it. In, you can do anything. Oh yeah, that's the best part. You can do anything. I cosplay mm-hmm. boy, girl, mm-hmm. whatever. I'm doing between. Mojo Jojo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be a Powerpuff Girl. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm doing it for the next show. You know what? If if you, if you do that, I might I might try to do him because yeah. he's my favorite cover. Ah, he's my favorite. Fa- he is everything for Powerpuff Girls. Yes. Every time he comes on screen, I'm like, oh, him. <laughs> mm, he's just everything to me. And I'm like, I, and a lot of people don't understand this. He's probably, and this is how brilliant the show was. They snuck him in, but he was probably the first, one of the first non-binary characters to slip into a Cartoon Network show. Well, he was a villain, but also they but he was a villain, but the villain. because he had male yeah. and female qual, like, yeah, because yeah, he had male and female qualities. Mm-hmm. Yes, he was one of the first first uh, to introduce a non non binary character. So uh, I've always been fast. Every like it's Powerpuff Girls. Yeah. Yes, I was in my twenties watching the Power. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was in my twenties when I was watching the every Cartoon Network. Mm-hmm. I was like, Cart- I want to be Blossom or Bubbles. Mm-mm. No, I wanted to be. I wanted to be him. Because <laughs> that's that's evil right there, and I'm like, oh yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. But that was. Mm-hmm. That I mean, I even recognized it then. I'm like, oh, that's that's gay evil. That's the best kind. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they always allow gay to be evil. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's gay, past, you know? mm-hmm. yeah. But it's actually making fun of um, past tropes from the 30s and 40s that portrayed gays as evil. So it actually comes from that. From from that. So right. Right. to see that, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a giant nerd. I'm, I'm comic Yo, books. I'm anime. I'm Some cartoons. Stuff, yeah. I'm all this other stuff. I'm a hot hot gay nerd. Just in case anybody out there. <laughs> Me, uh, mm. me too. A hot gay nerd. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Hot gay nerd daddy. There you go. Daddy. Mm, daddy. Mm-hmm. So, y'all can look my way next time you see me at the comic book store. You can uh, look my yeah, way. Yeah, it's all right. Yes. I'm going to have to let you figure out the makeup for that because that would have to, but I would I would have to be him. That would be. Oh, come on, him. Mm, mm-hmm. Pull it off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I could pull it off. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If there's, well, uh, committee. If there's nothing else going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we see it. Uh, I think we. we mm-hmm. <laughs> this is how we end. The, we have to. We, we you and I have to figure out how to end the show. I mean, really, we just we end the show. We start the show. The middle of the show is great. Then the end is like. Oh, okay, God. where are we done? <laughs> see you next. Week. We'll see you next week. Have have a great do time. Have, do we have a sponsor? Uh, yes, we still have a yes. Well, before we forget and end the show and not include it. Yes, we have, we have to give a shout out to Tubi's Woodworking. Because he would, he would actually have a great time listening to this episode, right? <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, he, hopefully, he listens along. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. <laughs> Everybody says that about him. He just, I, you know, he is he he is a great friend. I've known him for a long time, and him and his wife, they're they're a great couple. I met many many years ago, but you look at him and you wouldn't think he was like sexy, but there's something about him that. Every time, I, every time my friends meet him, they're like, yeah. "Hey, daddy, how you doing?" And I'm like, "Y'all need to calm down." <laughs> he got a daddy thing about. He, he got a daddy him. thing about him, and he you he has. You don't, right. And you know, you know what it is. He's super confident. He has his confidence do about him. Do it. And even I went. Mm. Mm. At one point in our friendship, I went. You know what? If you weren't, mm. if you were my friend, baby, <laughs> if you weren't hooked up with your wife, who I love oh. to death. We would have already been doing it and having a good time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All over working his mm-hmm. wood, huh? Because mm-hmm. even his wife is like, wood, honey. Because <laughs> even his wife is like, you know what? He wasn't my type when I met him. <laughs> was something he about was, him. but there was something about him. And I said, you know what? I'll give him a chance. And then, oh my god, <laughs> I 
I went, if you went, oh my God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you want to hold on man. to that one? It works with his hands. Mm-hmm. Oh, but, his hands. Mm-hmm. oh, and he can cook too. You know, he's a he's a uh, oh. he's a trained chef oh. as yeah, well. <laughs> Tuval is a trained chef as well, so he can make you a cutting board, cook some food on it, and then give you wood later on. Okay. <laughs> So that's uh, Tuvi's Woodworking. Uh, go to Tuvi'sWood.com. Uh, put in the code Little Gaze if you want to get twenty percent off of a specialized cutting board. He can make a specialized cutting board for you right, in any design that you want. And he Cute. he loves 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 the gay community as much as I do. So. Uh, okay, gay man. That doesn't mean that y'all harass him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's, community, mm-hmm. he's he is an ally. He is not. Yes. Yes. <laughs> ally. Mm-hmm. He's made that point to me. He's made the. Yeah, he, he's made that point <laughs> quite a, a number of times. Mostly with me, though. <laughs> Joel, I'm just an ally. Calm down. <laughs> Take a note for the answer, please. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get out of here because, you know, like I said, it's, girl, it's hot. It is. It's supposed to be, you know, the weather changed today. It went from 74 degrees to 58. This is Houston. Y'all, this is Houston. Right. So we're going to get out of here because I, I need to get out of this girdle because it is it's, it's killing me. It's killing me. So we out. Bye. Bye.